Hello, this is Haku the Bean, and today we are going to be tumbling again. If you like this video, please leave a like on the video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel. And let's get right into this. Yee. I want to share some wisdom from my high school art teacher. In my IAP art class, there was a girl who was just staring right to experiment with mixed media. At this point, she was still playing around, trying to decide what direction she wanted to go with her portfolio. So, when she... so on critique day, she brought in an abstract canvas with some rhinestone highlights and pointed it in, in, in real peacock feathers. She loved sparkles and peacock feathers, so she it thought she'd try introducing them a little. After everyone had given some input, the teacher gave her this advice. This advice, very fair if I is here. So here's the thing. I do not like the style. These are just elements that do not speak to me personally, but I see you like them, and you're doing interesting things with them. My biggest critique is I only merely dislike this piece. I want you to make me hate it. Go crazy with the things that you like. Don't hold back trying to make it it powerful to people like me. Because I am never going to like it. If your audience does not like it, it should drive them crazy seeing how much you love it. Her portfolio was full, chock full of neon colors, glitter, and rhinestone, and splashed of peacock feathers. And it was a delight. Our teacher despised every piece. But she got uh, great marks and I think even won some awards. And more importantly, she was happy and proud of the results. But she didn't limit herself by trying to appeal to people who were never going to enjoy what she enjoyed. Take right here, be as great as you want. Don't limit yourself based on other people's tastes. They're not you, and you are incredible. Literally this channel. Let's go. <laughs> I'm a straight white man every day of my life. On Wednesday nights, I just want to be a lesbian. My friend, on its rude character, who is searching for a wife. Funny story about that. She's figured out that she is a that she is a lesbian seven days a, a week. We got another one, girls. No kidding. That's so me. Hey, whenever I go to sleep, I see game saved. Despair ending route. Right before I close my eyes. Should I be worried about this? Despair ending route. Does that mean that you're coming out of depression? That's amazing. I'm so proud of you. Or does this mean that your route is about to become really, really depressing? I'm not really sure. Let's continue. Something I am utterly obsessed with is the physical copy of Dracula that I recently purchased that has, as part of its foreword, some of the original idea notes that Bram Stoker had about what Dracula's vampiric powers or traits would be. One of these is that Dracula's likeness could not be captured in a painting. He, he always looks like someone else, which only leads me to imagine a scenario in which he, the Count lines many of his castle hallways with paintings of himself throughout the centuries. But none of them look the same, and none of them look like him. But Jonathan can't help but notice they all somewhat somehow look eerily similar. He brushes it off, assuming they are simply counts of generations past. That is... Wow, that's really fun. It's so beautiful how cops instinctively... Per or tech, whatever, whichever protest group is the most fascist. Like how albatrosses can instantly identify their partners after a year at sea. Just like minions. <laughs> no way! Just like minions. Oh man, I gotta do a long one. Okay. We're doing a long one. Look out, out, out friends. We're doing a long one. And it's taking a while. I just remember a cab always.
As long as we're talking about weird sibling texts, y'all guys see this completely unprompted banger my sister sent me the other day. Alex, I don't know if you tuna, but I have just discovered this brand, and although it's expensive, I've never had such a luxury ex experience while eating canned tuna. <laughs> Worth it, even just to try once. She didn't even tell me where she got it. The lobster place, or Ortiz Bonita Ed Norte. White tuna in olive oil. Seven and a half freaking dollars! Oh, that's, that's how groceries are these days. I freaking hate inflation. We can't even have, have canned tuna in this hell world. So I looked up, up reviews of the specific tuna. I have several things to report. One, apparently it really is just that freaking good. Two, there's an arson and version they made ate it with tuna belly, which is reportedly phenomenal. And despite the $21 price tag, I generally want to try it. Three. The YouTubers who review canned tuna are simultaneously the weirdest and most boring people who have ever lived, and I'm completely obsessed with them. Also, I know why I'm getting my, my sister for Christmas. My Christmas for sister, okay. That's funny. Ow, that hurt my ears. My headphones are not doing so well. I mean... None of my things are doing too well these days. Morally gray does not mean is bad but also sad. A character that's morally gray, it will not burn down the world because it makes them feel powerful. They'll do it because they perceive something about to be broken. More of agreeity has nothing to do with the character's past, and everything to do with the relationship between their actions and their intentions. Morally gray stuff like, I selfishly desire adoration and praise, so I will do heroic acts to gain that praise, and I am willing to torture an enemy soldier if it means saving the innocent. It is not... I am an evil tyrant, but I was bullied as a child, so it's okay. Just to add to that, moral greatness and sympathetic villain or anti-hero doesn't have to go hand in hand. It's perfectly okay to have one and not the other, and that approach is inherently more interesting. Like, an evil tyrant character can be generally sympathetic and human and selfish and do bad things for entirely wrong reasons and can still be lovable. A morally great character can be completely unrelatable, the most unlikable force in life, but still have good intentions and a rational and strategy to carry it out. Most young adult or Marvel villains are more sympathetic than morally gray, while many characters in high-concept sci-fi, like Three-Body Problem, can be morally gray but unsympathetic. It depends on what you're appealing to in your audience, and neither approach is inherently superior. And like, as an audience, it's cool to label your fate a properly but perfectly okay to just love a character because they're, they're sad and angry and you find catharsis in watching them burn things. Don't we all have a little bit I want to watch people burn and things. So people want to watch the world burn. <laughs> My German freaking hated his crate when he was a baby. To the point where he would cry his eyes out with a treat and a bone while I took a 20 minute shower. But out of nowhere, a couple of months ago, he just started sleeping in his crate all the time during the day, so I wish you the best of luck. I know you probably just forgot to type Shepherd, but I'm in tears <laughs> making you desperately trying to put a small German boy in a crate. Oh my god, they're putting me in the crate and Cajun! <laughs> That's too funny. No way.
<sighs> Person who is chronically outside. They see this course and just go, Ooh, man, this is just like when two sparrows want the same sunflower seed. <laughs> no kidding. First person and voice. Americans drive on the wrong side of the road. Really? Because the majority of the world seems to disagree. Finally, America didn't fuck something up and call it good. Yeah, look at this. Wait, what side of the road do we drive on again? Oh yeah, the right side. The entire world, except for India, Britain's secondary prison, and some islands around it, parts of South Africa, Britain, and this one read and this one like tiny bit in the Caribbean that I'm quite sure is blue. Oh yeah, and I think that's Japan. I'll drive on the right side of the road. Britain, you're out of your mind. The somewhat sexual quality of sound. What? In me. Pukacho, why? I can't see Pukacho post without... Uh, uh, out Loving this. Wow! My own giant robot! I'm now the luckiest kid in America! I like how... Don't be fooled, this is the saddest children's movie ever made. I like how he's the luckiest kid in America. Like, there's some Canadian asshole with two giant robots. Yeah, didn't you hear about them? They got two giant robots. But you see, the Canadian government isn't an awful, so not really a. It's trying to kill the robot. I Me mean, at any given time. Can we just focus down and focus on the task at hand? Please? My brain. My brain. Randy Bo Sprinkle. Randy Bo Sprinkle. Kip Chip. <laughs> Spinge. <laughs> Spinge. Bench. <laughs> no. Chichen Negus. What is it, Raymond? <laughs> Brogly. I too love Brogly. <laughs> Straw babies for sale. Straw babies. This hurts. No way. That actually got me. Whew. <sighs> I really think Rasputin lucked out. In that being re remembered by history as some species of a giant, unkillable sex wizard, is something most of us can only for earnestly aspire to. Hmm. Which door are you going through? Door one, for you start life. Door two, five billion dollars. Or door three, tell customers they're idiots without getting in trouble. Obviously, we're going through door three. If you had five billion, you could hop on, hop from job to job, calling entire customers idiots all across your city, putting the fear of you into every shithead in town. Because people would be afraid to be rude to servers and cashiers. Let's you emerge from the back room like some kind of manners enforcing specter. Hmm. 
Five billion dollars can buy many tell customers they're idiots without getting in trouble. Very brain. Very much brain. That is a lot of brain going on right there. My mouse. Pet Cemetery in Yorkshire. Yorkshire. It was the biggest stone in the lot. I'm not going to do the accent. Just can't. It's not just an accent, it's a whole new language, okay? I can't do a Yorkshire accent, I'm sorry. <laughs> do you want to break your fingers? There's a new petition taken off in Chicago on change.org and we think you might. I'd be interested in signing it. I don't want to put my fingers in the barrel of a gun. Change.org. Position higher than what? Million people to put their finger. <laughs> it's in the shoot a hole of people's guns so they can't, can't shoot them. It's still gonna shoot and they're gonna lose a finger. No! The finger blocks a bullet. We can do this. This is a gun we're talking about. The projectile is fired by using an explosion, not by compressed air of a toy gun or the elastic forces of a slingshot. People would be lucky if they only lost their finger. The finger blocks it. The finger won't block it. The shaft is only there for keeping the bullet straight. Auto propulsion happens behind the bullet. The bullet would rip right through the, the finger. Er, and not that, that many would actually fit without being, the victim being a child and beyond. And beyond. The bullet would go forward a little and then hit the finger and stop. It's not that hard to understand. Could you imagine if guns could actually be stopped like this? There'd be so much less conflict because we would just be like, no. Just no. <laughs> Putting ketchup on fries is too permanent for me. I have to dip. I control the sauce. Dude, some people just pour it on the fries? Ew. Live a little! Try something daring! Something risky! Something messy! Embrace the chaos! Face it fearlessly! Show your power over it by ravaging it like, like the animal you know you are when no one's looking! No, I'm scared. <laughs> so me. Every girl has had a pregnancy you scare. Even if you haven't had sex yet, you think you're pregnant. The fuck? Being, being late is the most terrifying thing in the world when you're a virgin because the only thing you think is, Oh my god, I'm the next virgin Mary, call the Vatican. Fucking truth. Yep, that's why you, you gotta teach kids basic anatomy. Come on, like that. You can't get pregnant like that. <laughs> you don't have to ship things. Just a reminder. Yeah, you could deliver them as... <laughs> ah, poor thing. Walked right into the electrical fence while speaking. <laughs> Goblin Wealth is measured in the size of your gristle pile. 
Goblins say an authority is collect taxes via a system of tax goblins who attempt to sneak into your cave to take a portion of your crystal. Each tax goblin understands exactly what percentage of its is in gross crystal they are allowed to pilfer. Though we're one to one yet in most caverns. And must rely on their wits and stealth to collect crystal taxes. Any goblin does not have to pay taxes if they can physically repel the tax goblins from their cave. It is usually considered polite to leave at least two booby traps. One lethal and one unlethal for your tax goblin. Very true. <sighs> Ideal ways for me to die. One, old age, peacefully in my sleep. Two, after a long and illustrious career, I am at a rooftop of gala hosted in my honor. I am wearing a beautiful gown, holding a glass of red wine, standing by the railing. A scorned lover approaches me, and after a passionate spat, they push me over the edge of the building. The wine glass goes flying, splattering in their alphabet and red as a visual metaphor for the blood in their hands. As I descend, my gown flies around me like two beautiful oh, wings, a bird in flight. A photographer on the street manages to take a photo before I hit the ground, and that photo wins the Pulitzer. A New York Times think piece is released regarding whether or not it's moral to profit off of a fo off a photo of someone's death. The think piece also wins a Pulitzer, so they also profit off that. Oh no. <sighs> I think we're gang somewhere here. In 1944, a kid named George, short for General Electric, mm, excuse me, was saved from drowning by a U.S. Navy crew member. George was in front of the photograph and given a liberty card and detailed health, health record. What the heck? Farm H2. To be completely made up by a medical officer at, at time of enlistment, extension or of enlistment, regular enlistment, enrollment, appointment, commission, or pro. A motion. George. Zero number. 69 69 69. Nice. That's their surname. Their Christian names. General Electric. Listen, so Seattle, Washington. Date August 28, 1944. Rank EM1C, I think. Career service. None. Board place. PSNY. Date. September 9th, 44. Nationality. <laughs> Pussy. Religion. Catholic. Well, wow, you're just gonna assume their religion. Rude. Next of kin or friend. The guy is at a lightning shop. USS North Carolina. Complexion. Harry. Hair. Gray. Gentle, oh, no, general appearance. Caddish. Head and face. Normal. Eyes. Green. Peachy condition. Vision. Right. Left. 2020. Color of reception. Blind. Ears. Right. Pointed. Left. Pointed too. Hearing. 1515. Mouth, nose, and throat. You should see them. Height. <laughs> one foot and one inch. Weight. Ten. Temperature. Sixty-nine. Chest is expiration. Four F. At inspiration. One A. Skin and then glands. Can't see it. You worried? Neck. Hollers like hell. Spine and extremities. Twitchy tail. Thorax. Swell. Respiratory system, he does alright. 
Fire blood vessels has red blood. Pulse before our exercise, 69. After exercise, 69. After rest, still 69. <laughs> blood pressure is this all like 69. This all like 69. Out of it of us, normal. Genital urinary system smells. Urinalysis of a boomin negative. Sugar negative. Nervous system worries the hell a lot of everyone. Any evidence? Bachelor of North Carolina. There's so much going on here. Nationality, pussy. Religion, Catholic. Still hilarious. Can't believe they just decided this cat was Catholic, despite the fact that. All cats willingly go to hell just to watch everyone suffer. Even though cats don't really care or believe in any sort of hell. Ah. <sighs> <sighs> One time I dreamt, Mike Flyer gave me his phone number in a Twitter thread and immediately Rick rolled me. Thinking about how Elon would want, want you to call that Xing or that you got Xed or some nonsense like that. Because their tweets are now called Zeets. I guess you could say that you got Zeted. Thanks, I hate it. No, it's tweeted. Fuck Musk. Seriously. Dude can't aim, can't even get it is our same rank. He doesn't deserve his site doesn't deserve to get the air name right either. Once I was at a party and they asked me what my dad did for a living and said that he died when I was twelve. Of course he already he collective Oh I'm so sorry. And I hear some girl whisper from the back. You're halfway to becoming Batman. And that's how I met one of my best friends. <clears throat> hmm. Alright, just gonna have to be the last one. Not gonna say it again. A bog is a wetland that's acidic. A fed is wetland that's alkaline. Finally, someone said it. A swamp is a wetland whose vegetation consists of trees or other woody plants. A marsh is a wetland with some with other forms of vegetation. A little louder for the people in the back. Now you know what the wetlands are. Yeah, okay, this is gonna have to be the last one. I'm sorry. That was Tumblr. If you liked this video, please like I got a video, comment down below, and subscribe to the channel, and maybe help me learn how to talk in words. I have no idea what I'm going to be doing tomorrow, so until then, goodbye!